I'm a first year PhD student from the University of Southampton and today I'll just talk to you about my PhD research on quantitative virtual histology, visualising the microstructure of avian bone using high resolution and high throughput synchrotron based computer tomography. I should have made that short time really. <laughs> So today I'm going to give you a bit of background to my project to start with. I'll go through some of my methods simply. Am I not speaking loud enough? Okay. Um, I'll give you some, some of my initial results. And hopefully convince you that the way we're going to do uh, histology in the future is, by, is a, using a virtual approach using synchrotron based micro CT. So first of all, some background. There have been 12 specimens of Archaeopteryx found, um, but the size range of those is, is huge. So the, the largest, the, the, the some of them Archaeopteryx, is not far off seven times bigger than the Ashtap, which has led some people to say that they're different species, sometimes even different, different genera. Um, whereas other people have said that actually that just represents a growth series within the, within the single species of lithographica. Now, at the moment, we don't really have a very clear way of confirming that either way, because we don't have a good way of assessing ontogenetic age in fossil birds. We don't have a good way of assessing them in modern birds, let alone in fossils. And I think that this is a problem not just in Archaeopteryx, but more broadly across Mesozoic birds. I think possibly that some of the species that have been identified as different species could be um, members of different growth series of fewer species. So, the aim of my project is to develop a quantitative microstructure-based model that can be used to estimate developmental age in, um, from initially using modern, modern bird comparison, and then to apply that to, mod to fossil birds to, to better understand the biology of these birds. And more specifically, I'm imaging modern avian bone using micro CT, three dimensions, we're going to be measuring a set of histological features, including volume, shape, and number density of the osteocyte nucleus, which is where the spaces where bone cells used to be, and also the organisation of vasculature. I want to look at how those different factors vary throughout development and growth series, and then develop automated methods to increase my throughput and speed things up. So we know. We know that bone structure, bone microstructure in birds, varies with the rate at which that bone is deposited. So, for example, in very fast growing bone, we have very dense but not very well organised vasculature. Whereas as the growth slows, then we have much less dense but more longitudinally arranged vasculature. And similarly with the osteocytes, the bone cells, in fast growing bone, we have plump osteocytes that are not very well organised, and then in the slow growing bone, we have much more flattened osteocytes, which um, are more longitudinally arranged again. And this is really useful for estimating developmental age because growth rate varies in birds in a sigmoidal way throughout the So, in very young birds, growth rate is very fast. But this slows right down towards the point where they're reaching full size, where it's almost where it almost stops. So, <laughs> so, if, we look, <laughs> so if we look at cross section of the bone um, and see this sort of structure, so that's one of the things, this sort of structure, we can say it was growing fast, it was probably young. Um, this sort of structure, it was growing slowly, it was probably mature. But beyond those very qualitative, fast, slow, young, old measures, we don't really have a way of doing that more precisely. I think that's really important. I think the other major issue with current histological studies is that they're based on uh, just a few thin sections. So they're qualitative, like I said. They're just either a couple of thin sections or um, looking at bone fracture surfaces in just a small range of bones and species. More importantly though, they're two-dimensional. And bone is not a two-dimensional structure. It's very, it's, it's complex and structure. It's very different longitudinally than it is in a transverse section. So here we can see that this is an osteocyte sliced in different planes. 
and the, it can appear in very different shapes in different planes. And if we're using osteocyte shape as a measure, it's really important to actually get the right shape. And similarly with that organisation, in the transverse section, you might see that osteocyte networks are quite disordered, whereas in the longitudinal section, they can look very, very well organised, which would give you a different estimation of growth rate depending on the section you cut. So I think it's really important to get um, an idea of the, the structure in three dimensions. So my answer is to use micro CT using a virtual approach, which is also non-destructive, which is great for fossils. So with micro CT, we can get um, to submicron resolutions using, which is the resolution that you'd need for histology, non-destructively. And so this this image is very nice. It shows. This is a standard histological thin section, and these are the micro CT images of the same thing. So you can see all the same features, the lines of the rest of growth, the vasculature, the same sort of resolution, but without damaging the fossil at all. And you could project that in three dimensions. So my study specifically, I'm looking at how these how the microstructure changes in a growth series of modern birds, um, initially in ducks. So I'm taking the long bones from a growth series of ducks and scanning each of the long bones and measuring all of the histological traits that I mentioned earlier. Hopefully, I'll also be able to do that in quails because, or, or pheasants maybe, because they have a different developmental pattern to ducks. So you can see that ducks uh, grow very rapidly and then it slows down. They don't start flying until quite late. Whereas something like a pheasant or a quail grows much more slowly but flies very early. So the biomechanical requirements of the bones are quite different than you might expect from growth patterns. Um, so if I want to make a model that will let me predict age in an unknown bird, I really need to be able to incorporate different growth patterns. So where am I up to so far? Well, my first experiments looked at the best ways of using micro CT to image modern bone. So there are a few different types of sources you could use for micro CT. Can I use a lab-based source, which is fairly widely available now? Or you can use a synchrotron-based source, which is very much more powerful, but maybe more difficult to access. So this image on the left is a mid-shark mid section of the cortical biotin of uh, It's taken on our state-of-the-art uh, micro-CT system at the University of Southampton. And you can see the histological features that I'm interested in, so these large holes of blood vessels, and the smaller holes are the osteocyte here. Um, so you can count them, you can segment out the blood vessels, but the signal to noise ratio and the resolution are not quite enough that you can actually properly segment out the osteocytes and, and to look at shape and volume. Whereas if you can put, compare that with the synchrotron images, the osteocytes are really clear, easy to segment out, and you can measure both volume and shape in three dimensions. The other advantage, this scan here took six minutes. This one took 24 hours. So <laughs> the throughput is vastly different. And so for this type of study, it's absolutely essential to use a synchrotron source. Now, after the, um, after the image has been collected, we can work on visualizing that in three dimensions. So these images are of a duct to the atlasis, say a cortical bone. So it's about a millimeter across, about 300 microns thick. It's just the cortical bone section. And then the yellow shows the osteocyte of DNA within that section, and the red shows the blood vessels or blood canals. So you can get a lot more information by using this three dimensional imaging technique. And then you can even separate out the different features and have them separately, and then measure these features in an automated way using one of those programs. Um, I want to validate my approach using more conventional methods, so initially using like, uh, biomedical type things, uh, sections with stains to test whether the osteocyte lacunae I've found are actually osteocyte lacunae by using stains to stain the nuclei and also some of the blood vessels and to compare with current 2D methods. And then once those have been confirmed, I'm going to measure the osteocyte volume, number, density, shape, vasculature, 
and use those to produce a regression-based model so that I can estimate age in an unknown sample. Once I've started, once I've done that, I'm aiming to test it in, like I said, with the quail, in a phylogenetically and functionally broader sample. Um, hopefully, hopefully expanding the body size range, uh, range right up to things like ostrich and even maybe recently extinct elephant birds to get a really broad range, but also down into smaller and faster growing altricial birds. Once that's been refined, I hopefully be able to apply it to some fossil material and use that to really improve our understanding of, of growth in recent zone birds. So to conclude, um, I think that the, using an asynchrotron based micro CT approach gives me a way of imaging avian bone in three dimensions in a non destructive way. It's truly quantifiable and um, objective in that sense. And the synchrotron source allows a high throughput approach. All these things mean that we can have a really rig rigorous and systematic approach using growth series in modern, modern birds for validation. And this should help us to understand the evolutionary taxonomy and biology of birds, both Mr. Zerk and Ronald. So I'd like to thank my supervisors, the uh, Movers Imaging Facility at Southampton, been very helpful. Also um, at Swiss Light Source, where I did my synchrotron work. So thanks very much. <laughs>